Hi everyone, this is Peric from P2 Design. In the latest streaming, I've been animating this. Let's see the highlight with the main steps. Please excuse me for the poor quality of the video. As I haven't recorded the video while I was streaming, I had to download it from YouTube. Unfortunately, it got compressed and the resolution is not as good as before. Since there is no complicated input, you'll be able to follow. Before I start animating, I'll always make sure that I have a king set, meaning that I will write in typos all the keys that will be used to animate my character. I don't key the unused transform channel, like the skull for the end. I've decided to make this run cycle upon 24 frames, so I will set my start to 0 and my end to 23 so that frame 24 won't be written as it should be and must be the same as the first frame. Then I will start to pose my character in the first contact pose. So it doesn't matter which pose you start with. But in this case, I wanted a clear pose to start so I will set the first pose as the contact pose of the end. One of my tips here is not to rotate the master torso bone because you can input rotation with all the torso bone and this one will be used only for the up and down motion. When creating those poses, I made sure I gathered some references from Google or whatever you want to use, showing the decomposed movement of a cat or a dog. If you can find a monkey run cycle or whatever character you are animating run cycle, that's better. But you will easily find cat and dog animations. Using only 24 frames instead of 30, as I'm using a 30 frame per second rhythm for this animation, will help me to divide the movement in four steps every six frame, so that with my main poses, I'll be sure that I will have a smooth rhythm. So during this blocking stage, I will set four different poses. One will be the contact pose we've been discussing about. Then there will be a down pose or a passing pose when the ends and the feet will cross each other and that the, our character body will be at its lowest level. Then there will be a push pose where our character is pushing the ground with his back legs. And finally an up pose where he will be floating in the air before getting back to the contact pose. To do so, I just jump every 6 frames and I pose my character. The keys will be automatically recorded and I have made sure I have activated the filter and set it to available. So that Blender will only write keyframe based on our initial keying set. During this stage, I wasn't considering any cloth animation or even the tail animation, the feathers and all those stuff because for me, they are not driving the animation. They will be following the movement of our character with a follow through animation. Then during this streaming, I wanted to showcase something and I wanted to experiment a bit. It was that I wanted to offset the timing. Instead of having an every six frame regular run cycle, I wanted to offset the movement so that our character stay a little longer in the air before he get a fast move running movement. To do so, the first step was to set intermediate keyframe. So I select every bone and press Shift E so that I have an automated interpolation that I can control by moving the mouth. And then I can refine those intermediate poses. So in this stage, I've kept a regular rhythm in the animation, meaning that every intermediate poses will be set free keyframe after the main pose or extreme pose. 
Here you can see a play blast of the blocked run cycle with an even timing. To break the regularity in the timing and get something a bit more stylized, what I have done is that I have reduced the amount of frame for all the contact pose, all the poses where my character should uh, touch the ground. And then when he was in the air, I just increased the spacing between uh, the keys. To make it smoother and more interesting, I've also accelerated a bit the tempo by reducing the wall animation from 24 to 22 frame. We have made the wall blocking stage using constant interpolation. As I'm happy with the blocking here, I can switch to Bezier interpolation using auto smoothed curve. And I can start working on my curve editor. So the idea here is first to set the up and down rhythm. So I will work with the main torso bone first and try to set a good acceleration when it goes up this floating effect when he's in the air and try to input weight when he touched the ground by getting this absorption effect. When you are working on an animation, what you should try to figure out is which parts of the body or which part of your character is driving the animation. When your character is throwing a punch, for example, the movement will start from the hips and then we'll go through the spine. You will then rotate your chest, rotate your shoulder, arm, forearm, and finally the hands. So when you are splining your animation, you should do this in this order. But when it comes to run cycles, it's easier to think about the foot or the hands here first, because those are the things that will drive the rest of the body. Even if you think that physically your arm will be pulled by your shoulder, just think in reverse. As we are animating with IK, that should be quite obvious, let's say. It will be easier for you to get a correct animation of the foot with nice arcs and nice cycles and then interpolate this movement to the hips, meaning that when the foot gets in contact with the ground, the hips should rotate toward this foot because your hip will lift due to the pushing to the ground. And so you can achieve exactly the same stuff for the shoulders and the spine then. When the hand touch the ground, it should push on the shoulder and lift it and then the spine will follow. Your first concern here will be to switch any contact pose to vector because your foot or hand when they will touch the ground are supposed to be accelerating. So you should also change the shape of the curve by making an invert uh, curve. Just think about the bouncing ball. So before the foot touch the ground, it goes faster and faster. And then once on the ground, assuming that our character is running with a constant speed, you will need to have a linear interpolation. So what I do instead of setting it to linear, I just remove any intermediate keyframe and set both extreme keys to vector. During this stage, I'm mainly working with side view, meaning that I'm only working on the height of the foot and its depth. So I'm working only on the Z and Y axis and I will try to get nice arc by playing with my curves. Later on, I will be able to play with the X axis to slightly offset the movement of the foot on the side. The idea here is to create a nice arc from the side view because if the side view is working it will be easier for me then to add slight offset uh, from a front view. The second thing is that I'm not rotating this master foot bone. I prefer to use the roll bone to rotate the foot. It's like for the torso. I feel like it's easier to work 
on one kind of animation or movement per bone when it's possible. For example, the foot, I can polish its position first, then work on the heel position and rotation using my rolled bone, and finally polish the toes by rotating the toe bones. The toe bone, the toe bone will behave as follow-through animation, giving nice arcs to the foot shape. The idea here is to input some flapping movement before it touches the ground and wherever it will leave it. Once I was done with this, I was quite happy with the result, but not super satisfied. So in the very end of the streaming, I reworked a bit the foot arcs, making them more extreme because it was a bit too smooth here. And then I've been working on the ends exactly the same way by polishing my curve, making sure that the contact pose were set to vector and I had a linear interpolation when the when the hands were on the ground. Then from the front view I've started working on the x-axis of the feet and the hands. I wanted them to get closer whenever they will touch the ground and keep it straight linear when they were on the ground and finally slightly get a wider or spread out when leaving the ground to make a secondary arc from the front view that will look more natural and more appealing. The next step, even if it takes time, was pretty straightforward. I've started polishing the animation of the spine and then I've polished the chest by trying to offset them a bit and trying to input the sense of weight, meaning that we should have some kind of a braked curve of the back whenever our character has his hands on the ground because he's pushing and his shoulders are pulling the spine upward. And then I offset the head too and try to input as much movement as needed without making it going too crazy because his head is very big so if I input too much movement to it that will look like super jittery and super strange. As for the feet, I worked first from side view and then I've input some left and right movement and also some spinning movement on the Y axis from the front view and then just turn around my character to check out that his silhouette and his movement felt natural. In the final stage, I've animated the jaw with a follow-through animation, the cloth, the feathers, and also the tail this way. The idea here is that as those are driven by the head or the hips, it's pretty easy for me to guess how to animate them so that I can work by using directly the animation curve. The final thing is that if you want your cycle to work correctly, make sure that your curves are aligned on first and very last frame. And here is the final result. I hope this highlight will help you in your next animations. Hope you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to push the subscribe button and if you want to support me, go on my Gumroad page or Cup Brush or on the Blender Market. See you next time.